if you haven't found the right system or if the system's not working for you, it's not you, it's the system. So take, learn from people, but then make it your own and experiment and see what works for you. So what works for me is based on this idea by uh, on a book called The 90 Day Year. And the idea with, behind his book was, what if you can make your a year's worth of income in 90 days? What would you do in that 90 days? Now, that's not what I propose. That to me was too much. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if someone was in the hustle mode in the hustle phase of their life, but I'm almost 50 and I've got a five-year-old, almost six-year-old neurodivergent daughter. I am not hustling. <laughs> I'm hustling to take care of her, but not in my business. I want it to maintain and grow smoothly. So for me, when I think of my 90 day quarter, I think of it as what's one goal I want to focus on break it up into maybe two or three sub goals that support that main goal and just focus on that. Namaste, beautiful souls. I'm Shilpa and you're tuned into the Omni Mindfulness Podcast, a sanctuary for spiritual entrepreneurs. As a holistic mindfulness coach and social marketing strategist, I'm here to guide you on a transformative journey. On this show, we explore captivating stories and provide practical tools that deepen your connection with your authentic self. Through the personal and professional narratives of remarkable individuals, we expand our consciousness and ignite the spark of possibility. Each season, I curate content that empowers you to create a holistic lifestyle encompassing spirituality, mindfulness, energy awareness, and mindset. Join me as we engage in conversations with experts in their respective fields and share solo casts from yours truly, all aimed at supporting you and relaxing, revitalizing, resetting your body, mind, and spirit. I'm your host and the visionary behind Omni Mindfulness. So what if just one story had the power to shift the trajectory of your life? What if you could become an instrument in helping others realize their true selves? And what if your soul's higher purpose lies in experiencing the joy of Omni Mindfulness? Remember, it's never too late to rewrite your story. Welcome back, Gail. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So this month's uh, podcast series is really focused on a, to a series of topics that I feel like you and I have been able to really resonate over. But you got me so excited about your 90 day planner because I am about to just receive, I just got the text message of a planner called full focus. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You've heard of that. Yeah. And, um, I'm going to download your 90 day planner, but also use it in, um, I would say conjunction conjunction with the other one. Mm -hmm. and I got, um, information about that one because I'm currently in a course creation um, boot camp, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating my own first series of courses called Streamlining for Success for Solopreneurs. Nice. And so now I feel like the timing is so impeccable that you mentioned your 90 day planner. C can you share more about that? Sure, sure. I used to plan out for the full year and then break it up by month and by day, week and day of like that but by midway of the year definitely three-fourths into the year I would just lose all steam <laughs> sometimes even the after the first quarter <laughs> would just feel like I was completely off track and I just thought that there was something wrong with me versus thinking there's something wrong with the system which I think is important for people who are, are looking into streamlining their systems is that if you haven't found the right system or if the system's not working for you it's not you it's the system so take learn from people but then make it your own and experiment and see what works for you so what works for me is based on this idea by uh, on a book called the 90 day year and the idea with, behind his book was what if you can make your a year's worth of income in 90 days what would you do in that 90 days now that's not what i propose that to me was too much. 
<laughs> maybe if someone was in hustle mode in the hustle phase of their life but i'm almost 50 and i've got a five-year-old almost six-year-old neurodivergent daughter i am not hustling <laughs> i'm hustling to take care of her but not in my business i want it to maintain and grow smoothly so for me when i think of my 90 day quarter I think of it as what's one goal I want to focus on, break it up into maybe two or three sub goals that support that main goal and just focus on that. So if I'm just focusing on one thing that I want to accomplish, whether it's enrolling three more private clients or uh, be able to launch a new course, for example, I know I have a deadline because I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, when you're the boss, you could make up your own deadlines. And if you miss your deadline, you could like, okay, I'll just push off my deadline. <laughs> I do that all the time. But if I say, okay, by December 31st or by the end of March, that's it. There's there's more urgency, but it's not so quick that you don't see a significant result at the end. It's It's long enough that you've created some new habits to keep that system going. So with the planner, it's it's a PDF. Um, I could even have it provided as a Canva file so someone could customize it to the way they want. But there's a lot of apps out there where you could delete a, a page in a PDF if that's not working for you. But it's basically just takes your your big vision of what what's my life purpose? What am I doing on in this world? What kind of impact do I I want to make in my community? Break it down into okay, what's one thing I'm gonna focus for the next 90 days? break it down into little steps and then break it down to day by day. Here's what I'm doing. And I think we tend to put too much on our plate. So if we delete some of the stuff that's not necessary for that one goal, it just makes life so much easier. Yeah, I tend to do um, these things. I have it somewhere. I don't have it near my camera, unfortunately, but it's, I call it the white book. Have you seen those things? Mm -mm. Okay, so you have this pen and it's got an eraser. You could um, wipe off. It's like a mini Sharpie oh, and, a, uh -huh. and it's got a book um, that with several pages. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that I tend to write on it systematically. Okay, this these are the things I need to get done. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are related to Monday's goals and then the meta goal, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Well, I somehow in my head, I think I can do those 10 things. They're so simple. You know, <laughs> I obviously all it takes is da, da 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 da. Well, when you're in the middle of it or in the beginning, what's interesting is <clears throat> life. Like the yeah. cat will come in and start walking on my computer <laughs> or the internet's slow. So I go get up and get a coffee because. I, I just have to wait for something to process. And when I come back, there's a call or an email that I need to, I, I swear, I think I put way more. And then I, I, at the end of the day, I'm like, I only got two things done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I've, um, I actually write what I'm doing while I'm doing it. I, I call it my doing done list. So I have, um, a piece of paper. Actually, I use a, uh, a writable notebook now, a um, digital notebook, but I write down, okay, right now I'm focusing on this because my brain will go to every other idea that shows up on my screen. Like, at, like what you do, I do a little bit of social media management and you open up Facebook and, oh, I got a message here and, oh, I got this and I can't help but look <laughs> and it takes me off track. But when I look back down to my doing done list, I'm like, oh, I'm doing this right now. Let's go back to this. So it may take me 30 minutes to do something that it might take someone 10 minutes, but you know what? That's me. <laughs> it's going to just be that way. It's so true. The distractions are real because <laughs> I'm like a child. Like if I see my own child doing that, I'm very mom, you know, like stay focused. But then I'll be like, oh, that's a cute dress that they're showing <laughs> I like that color. And the next thing I know, I've gone down the rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
if I'm trying to get my daughter to a certain place and we're running late, I mean, it, it's like I'm I'm telling her what my own brain is trying to tell me is like, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh gosh, yeah. And then evening hits and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I, I, I did I get it done? Oh, but here's something else that really ties back to uh, that concept you just mentioned about doing done list and having mm -hmm. it in front of you to keep you focused. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing this and it's on my phone, you know, the notes app. Yeah. And so every day I open it and the habit broke about five days ago and I feel the effects of it. So I'm going to have to go back and do it because I've been doing it for three years now. Oh. We're on the notes app. Mm -hmm. I have my daily set of things that I need to think about or do. Mm -hmm. And I force myself to do it. I spend that 15 minutes in the morning after mm -hmm. my meditation. And like I said, I, I broke the habit broke a few days ago, so I have to go back and do it. But basically includes things like what were the wins yesterday? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You know, and what do they call it? The, the, the gains and the gaps. Mm -hmm. well, what were the wins? Um, and what will I want to accomplish or set the intention for in, in the day to come? Right. And even if it's not like this, you know, car, clouds parting, awesome thing. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that I can say, okay, I did this on a professional level yesterday. And I did this on a, a professional and then personal. And I include personal. And sometimes I think, well, what did I really do? I mean, I had coffee in the morning. I made dinner for the family, but it was just another day. But then the other day I'm like, you know, I've been starting including even the silly things. So I was like, well, I, I played a video game with my son. You spend time with your son on yeah. something that he's interested in. Yeah. So yeah, that's, I'd say that's definitely a win. Yeah. That's so that's, that's one of the many little things that it's in that yeah. daily notepad. We can go into details and in, maybe in the future, you and I, but I think I having those things in front of us, um, and it helps because like even a check mark, someone mm -hmm. was telling me that the yes. way the brain works is that the check mark is like the dopamine. Hit. It's a, it is, it, it does give you a dopamine hit. So for those of us who are dopamine deprived for, uh, I have ADHD. So is my husband, my daughter might as well. It, that little check mark. So I will even write things that I forgot to write down. I will still write it again and check it off just to check it off because it feels good. And I like what you said is you're acknowledging, yeah, I did do something. And there may be other little things that kind of squeeze through there, but it's also something of just being a person too, being human. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say that today was kind of a rough day because I'm trying to get to a new big task that's about to start and I'm in that stage where I don't know if this happens to you but right after something major gets done my office looks like a mess <laughs> and even though by nature I'm a very organized structured clean or person mm -hmm. but right now I've got a stack of seven books that I was going through to come up with inspiration for something I'm writing mm -hmm. I've got post notes all over I've got sheets of paper and our new cats luke and leia named after star wars oh, cute. They, come, <laughs> they, they come into my office and they'll have like a post-it note on their paw no. as they're walking around because <laughs> this is like the where all the post-it notes live oh that's so funny <laughs> get a video of that <laughs> yeah that I would make a great like, reel yeah. that would be a really funny reel and the, I, the irony was that the the post-it note that the cat picked up of last week it, it, I also have a mindset set uh, like on the wall where all the mindset post-it notes reside mm -hmm. and it said something to the effect of stay calmly active and uh, actively calm or something and I was not calm at the moment I'm like oh thank you <laughs> well, that's a sign from the universe <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah oh my gosh there's just nuggets of so much wisdom here that you shared these are um agnostic to our work Mm -hmm. but they do help with our work. But like you said, even if you've done something, I do the same thing. I go back, write it down and do a check. And there's this checklist on our kitchen counter. And my husband doesn't like anything out. And I'm the one of those people, if it's not in my sight, I will yeah. forget about it. Same. So mm -hmm. I need to have certain things in my sight. 
and it's a checklist and one is chores and sometimes I will go back and put the thing in there and put a check just so I feel good about myself. Well, you did do it, so I think you should feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm like, what did I really get done all day? <laughs> well, I think that's great. I think you're acknowledging what you did. I think a lot of us entrepreneurs, especially women entrepreneurs, are not giving ourselves that acknowledgement that we are doing that. Absolutely. Well, Gail, thank you so much for this conversation. And our next conversation, we will be talking about AI and how it can help us. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in, sweet soul. If you've enjoyed this episode, I would be so grateful for your kind review on Apple Podcast. Simply click on the link in the show notes to leave your lovely feedback and uplift our spirits. Your support means the world to me and helps our show thrive. So please show me your love and continue to practice Omni Mindfulness.